Camellia here, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you, finally, the review for Macaws 8121. You'll find here on the channel also um, a few uh, tutorials for some steps from this jacket because I was thinking some of the, the steps that they are in the instructions are a little bit crazy and or crazy, I don't know, unnecessary, complicated. So I was thinking to uh, share with you some things that I changed. So I made some tutorials. You'll find the links here in the description of the video. But uh, today I want to talk about general stuff about this pattern, the things I like and the things I don't like. And, uh, you know, my conclusions about them. Maybe if you consider making this pattern, you have some used out of this review. So, I was uh, really uh, excited about this uh, pattern. I mean, the, the jacket in the, on the front of the pattern envelope is really gorgeous. The fabric is really nice. I did look to find this fabric, but I could not find it. Um, and uh, something that I always check uh, when I see uh, patterns, new or old, is of course the tech drawing. And in this pattern, it was it's really nice. The, the, the drawing, it, it has a lot of, uh, you can see all the details, you can see the yolks in the front and the, the, the princess seems here with the well pockets. Also the back has really cool details that you can see in the, in the technical drawing very well. These, uh, I don't know, back uh, things, the armholes and a yolk and it's really nice. So if you see the, the tech drawing, you say I want to make it. Of course, if you are a little bit uh, crazy uh, about the details and stuff on uh, sewing patterns. So um, I really wanted to make it, but uh, I think it was that time that, uh, uh, of course, they become uh, something delightful and they change the, uh, the the portal costa, the 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 the, the postal taxes. They changed from uh, in the past. I was I could uh, buy three patterns in the fifteen dollars um, taxes, but now uh, it's only uh, there are only two. So finally, I bought it. I think uh, on Etsy, and even there, this cost me some money. But I was really excited to make it, and uh, I got this uh, beautiful wool from Minerva, and I was thinking now that's going to be great for this uh, for this pattern. So uh, of course. Not only because the fabric was uh, really gorgeous for Minerva, and I didn't wanted to, uh, I didn't want to mess it up. I made a, a twill, a muslin for this. I would make that with any fabric, because uh, with uh, big force patterns, I always, uh, I don't know, I know that my sizes is there are a little bit between the 12 and 14, but their size chart puts me sometimes on 16. So with that in mind, I traced uh, this pattern, the one that I have goes only to 14, size 14. So I traced size 14 and I made a trial. And actually I need to say that I ended up making three, I think. Uh, this one was the first one. It has no sleeves and I don't know if I can put it on. It has no sleeves because in the end I took the sleeves out and I used them in the final trial because I did not have fabric anymore. So this one was the first one and you can see here it's already a little bit pinched because I decided that... Um, okay, let's talk about the feet. First of all, um, I was thinking that in the, in the on the pattern envelope, on the, on the side, on the picture here in the front we cannot see much about the fit because it's uh, open and I don't know I did not I cannot remember on the website how it was looking but anyway I saw some versions on the internet and the style is quite boxy on the technical drawing I was thinking I got uh, maybe a little bit uh, misled about the fact that you see those princess seams and you get the first impression is that this tailored and that is uh, really much um, how should I say much on the body but it's not it's actually it's really it's really quite boxy and straight on the on the body so with that in mind and after having this on I this is a straight size 14 it does fit my bust I did not have to do much at the bust but I knew that here it was a lot of fabric so I decided to take uh, starting from the um, seam down all the way to the hem 
one centimeter away from the back panel and the side panel on the back seam. So that was the first um, thing I decided. But then, in this one I don't have the, the sleeves anymore in, but then it was quite, um, how should I say, uh, it did not give me a lot of movement because I found that the armhole was really uh, low. And you can see it already, I have quite a few centimeters between the edge and my uh, underarm. And you can imagine that here is also the one and a half centimeter seam allowance, so it, it was really low, the armhole. So based on the fit of this um, trial, I made another muslin and what I did there. Um, I, in, the f in the second one, so I, this one, it was already definitely was a go to take from the back uh, one centimeter. So this is the back panel, took one centimeter and also with the side panel. Then I also decided that uh, this is a typical change for me. Uh, narrow shoulder adjustment also in this pattern I took I think one and a half centimeters from the shoulder uh, length and uh, also based on this I decided that I needed to have um, sway back adjustment and to test that maybe you can see here with in the pink I took like a fisheye dart you can see taking it at the center back the most amount and going to nothing to the side seam. So that also went in the second uh, toile. And after that, um, I was thinking, you know, I need to, to, to see uh, still how, what is going on with the, uh, actually, if I remember well, first I was thinking maybe I need a little bit more bust and I made some crazy adjustments for the second toile that, and those didn't work. So I went back to the first toile and I was thinking, well, I, you know, that's happening when you want to, you are getting lost in adjustments. And at the moment, I think the best is to say, okay, I'm stopping now and I'm starting again. So I went back to the first one and I decided so to do the back with the sway back adjustment and taking in a little bit there, a little bit, the one centimeter. So of course this makes for two centimeters a total in the width and um, after trying this one again I realized that I think that the best um, solution for my lack of movement was to raise the armhole so I did that I raised the armhole and uh, then I made the third uh, toile with the adjustments so with uh, the shoulder narrow shoulder adjustment the um, a little bit lesser in, uh, width in the back and raising the armhole and that was a big change for me because I could really uh, feel the difference with uh, with the first uh, with the first toile. Of course, again that one has no sleeve, so you cannot see. But this one it was really really comfortable and I really liked it. Um, I also decided that I'm going to to keep it a little bit boxy like the design was and not take even more because taking more from here there is no side seam here and taking more from the princess seams it was going to affect also other parts like the design element from the back here with the um, with that flap in the back so with uh, deciding so I had the changes I knew what I wanted to have as you can see here I have two or three kind of sheets that I used but they are uh, they were okay they have no the fabric has no stretch and it was a good starting point for the fit so after this of course I had to make all the adjustments on the pattern pieces and it's not only that you make the adjustments on the shell but you have also pattern pieces for the lining so I had to change also all those pieces um, of course this is for example this is the lining and I can see here very well I think I added maybe one and a half centimeters to the to the armhole to make it high enough to give me the I don't know the movement the room for for moving what I wanted okay so I had to adjust all the pieces here is the swellback adjustment on the upper panel which went also of course a little bit on the lower uh, that lower panel and uh, then I had to put everything on a straight line to keep it on the fold and all those changes 
So those were my uh, fitting changes. I did not change anything on the sleeve length. For me, it's, it was perfect, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. No, this is the original sleeve length. Yeah. I uh, changed the lining and then I also decided, and for that you'll find here a um, tutorial on the, on the channel, I'll put the link in the description. I decided that I did not want to have those, um, the zipper from the, from the sleeve to have it against my skin. And uh, first of all, because I don't like it to have it against my, uh, my, my skin. And secondly, because I, wanted, uh, I want to protect my clothes against those uh, metal teeth. So I decided to add some uh, fabric gussets here. You'll see uh, the tutorial here on the channel. And of course, that meant that I needed a piece for the gusset. And you'll see in that video how I did that. And of course, that meant also that I had to change the lining piece of the sleeve because in the original pattern, you have the lining also with the same uh, slit as, or slit opening, let's say, like in the shell. And then you turn that and then you sew it by hand against the, the edges of the, of the zipper. But because I put it this, I got the sleeve back in the round and I had to change the, the sleeve lining also. So I just added back that uh, cut out and then added a little bit uh, for the sleeve gusset to give me the, the length that I needed in the circumference to be able to sew it uh, in the sleeve at the end when putting the lining. So that was that. And for the rest, uh, I did not have any other pattern changes. Uh, now, for the pattern instructions, I saw the um, Lindsay from uh, inside the hem. She made a uh, sew along for this jacket, and uh, what um, I didn't until that time. I did not pay attention to the instruction, so I was going to start a little bit at the same time when she started. But then I realized when I saw the instructions and I saw uh, her so long that the instructions are kind of crazy. I mean, they uh, have these uh, welt pockets, put it in the bodies without adding any uh, fusible interfacing to the pocket opening. I mean, that's a recipe for disaster. You always have to interface a little bit the area where you put your pocket. Also, I, it was really surprising for me to see that from the whole jacket, the only parts that they are interfaced are only the facings, the colors, both inside and outside, and the welts, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and also the facing uh, of this bit here. But um, not only because my fabric is just a little bit soft, or I don't know, it doesn't really have the weight for a jacket like this. I decided to interface almost everything, but also because some of the parts I think is really necessary to be interfaced. Like I said, the area where the pocket is coming. I think it's always nice to have in a jacket the front of the jacket interface. That is going to keep the shape of the jacket much, much nicer. Also, uh, let me think, the, the hems here, down, and also on the sleeves, I think is also an important part to be interfaced in a jacket. Um, but in my jacket, I interfaced almost everything is interfaced, only the sleeves, they are interfaced until here, I think. Yeah, so only the cap area and, uh, and the hem, of course, and for the rest, everything is interfaced. I did cut the under color on the bias because, I don't know, it... Uh, it turns much, uh, much nicer. I don't think you can see that. And um, yeah, so interfacing, I think it was a really big deal for me, the fact that it was skipped in the pattern. I don't know why, maybe it has to do with the, um, with the fabric that they used, I, I really don't know. Also, another part where there was no interfacing, also really, really crazy, is on the zipper area. And I think that's, Again, that's a recipe for disaster if you don't interface in such a fabric where you need to cut to the corners the, the zipper area. I think it's really, really important to do that. And that's why I think that those are 
kind of uh, things that you need to think ahead and think for yourself and not always use the, the pattern instructions um, you know exactly how they are explained and how they are done there they are i think i'm always watching um or if i'm looking at the instructions in a pattern like a guide and not uh, um, necessarily the exactly the things i need to do because if you are sewing already for a bit and um, even if you are a beginner you should try to see if there are methods that you can simplify or that you can improve and not always following uh, following the instructions how they are in the pattern that you that you want to make so uh, interfacing very important to be added in this pattern if not uh, in the front uh, panel completely and uh, like i did here a lot of interfacing but at least in the areas like the welt pockets and the zippers in the sleeves very important uh, the pockets are i did follow the um, instructions they were okay i can say they did turn out really nicely but again i think if i did not interface the opening it would have been a big mess so but uh, now they're not really functional i i'm looking like a crazy chicken when i try to put my hands in them but they are nice to detail because i think like this this breaking a little bit of fabric and it's not as boring um the zipper in the front it does get uh, all the way close like so but i i'm wondering if it was not meant to be this um lower part all the way up i really don't know i, I think it's a little bit odd and to be honest it is like this in the pattern that is stopping somewhere here but anyway you see pictures with me uh, wearing the jacket i'm really happy with it again the style is not as fitted as i would like and i was thinking it's going to be based on the pattern uh, piece or on the pattern uh, i don't know not based on this because on this one you cannot see anything but in my head it, it would have been much more uh, tailored and uh, i don't know not as wide not as boxy um something else that i also um, did differently than uh, the pattern was to add some uh, uh, sleeve heads here in the sleeve and uh, i think i did add that in the tutorial i'm not sure and also uh, putting some really uh, thin um, shoulder pads if you want to put shoulder pads in this pattern i think you should uh, think ahead that the um, the original has no shoulder pads so of course um, the thicker you go the more higher you get your uh, underarm seam so you should think about that but again i have really uh, thin ones only to pad a little bit here and to give a little bit more structure to the sleeve head so that's why i used the shoulder pads and uh, something else what i did um, really different than uh, in the pattern was to add the lining by um, by sewing machine so not with the hand because in the pattern so they have as i said they have that um, let's see they have that lining added by hand at the at the at the zipper at the sleeves and also they have the sleeves of the lining they are uh, sewn in sewn in everything so in the armhole by hand and also the bits at the zipper here in the front they are also done by hand and i must tell you that i think in the beginning when i started sewing and i didn't know about bagging the lining i was doing that and to be honest there was never nice i always i mean with the the more i tried to do it nicely and neat it was a mess so uh, again in this pattern i used the bagging method and in my tutorial here on the channel you'll find uh, i'm showing you how i did that it's really fast it's really nice it's very sturdy and i don't know you know it's better than doing it by hand i i must tell you um so in the tutorial i'm showing you how to do that and i think it's it's a really nice uh, i think i'm really happy with this and again it's very fast 
also I think it was nice to have also a neck uh, back neck facing here I realized that at the end that it was maybe better to put it there and something that I had a lot of trouble was with the fact that my uh, my lining uh, it was completely falling apart and I was happy to have this time the one and a half centimeter seam allowance you know I hate that I hate those big seam allowances but in this case I was really ha happy to have them because my fabric was unraveling and it was with every movement smaller and smaller and completely falling apart so in the end I did have just enough to uh, to to sew my uh, seam allowances and as you can see it's still falling apart a little bit but I don't expect any problems anymore because uh, it's already sewn. Um, of course another uh, one last uh, thing that is really important I think it's important to press this really nicely and to 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 trim uh, the seam allowances on the inside again they are one and a half centimeter trim them really well and press everything nicely and then I mean I worked with the wool but and that makes it of course really nice to uh, to be pressed and as you can see Again, I have some pictures and I can, uh, I'll put them here in the video so you can see a little bit better. Again, the pockets are, hmm, I never wear my hands like this in pockets, but they are nice. They are nice to be there for a detail. So this is how it's looking on. So yeah, this was my, uh, uh, me making them a course uh, 8121, uh, the sleeves. I don't find them short. I like to have my, my sleeves like this. I really hate long sleeves, like like so. I don't like them. They make me look frumpy and so I'm really happy with the length. But uh, there is, it is something that you should um, check in advance before you start cutting stuff. So this was uh, what I had to say about this uh, pattern. Again, a little bit disappointed about the fact that the instructions are lacking a lot of uh, interfacing bits, which are really, really important in making a jacket. Doesn't matter what kind of fabric you use, even if you use a denim of, of you don't need to use wool to think about those things. So even if you use another kind of fabric like a denim or I don't know any kind of fabric, bits like um, interfacing the um, pockets, interfacing the parts where here where the um, the zipper is attached they are very important and also I have in the tutorial here I'm where I'm showing the gusset of the sleeve here the zipper I'm also showing you how I faced this opening to have a really perfect corner here and everything really nice and straight and I think with uh, this application like I'm showing you in that tutorial you find it really also really easy to put the zipper straight and really nicely in your sleeves so I hope you enjoyed this video. I have uh, some really nice uh, projects uh, in the work now for the, um, some really gorgeous fabrics from Minerva. And uh, I'm starting to work on my coat from So Over It, from their um, Vintage Dreaming, I think is the name of the ebook. And uh, I hope to get that. I showed the last time another kind of fabric that I was planning, also some like a burgundy uh, polyester, but I got a really beautiful uh, one from Minerva and I think it's here and it's a denim blue wool which is gorgeous and I think I think it's going to work really really nice for that coat and I hope I can get it out of these three meters otherwise I plan to make with this the Dawson uh, Coty gun that I made a few years back. This one is a little bit softer. I think it's going to look also nice. But anyway, I need to. I need to. I need to have a, first a pattern from the sew over it uh, to um, place it to see if it's going to work. Otherwise, I have other plans. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, review. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me th thumbs up and uh, leave a comment under the video. I really love uh, hearing your opinion about uh, the stuff I'm making. It's really nice to chat about sewing stuff always. So I hope you enjoyed my review and I hope you have some help from these uh, tips and tricks that I shared with you. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye.